I'm just going to point out a couple things um, <clears throat> that you can uh, ask for as an option on the clay valve, pressure reducing valve. So in this example, flow would be going from right to left. So this is your inlet on this side and your outlet on this side. So starting with the inlet, um, you'll have you know all stainless pilot system, which uh, is you know for strength and corrosion protection. Uh, stainless gives you um, some advantages there. And so initially you'll have a pressure gauge on the inlet. <clears throat> so this tells you if you actually have you know inlet pressure available to operate the valve. Um, so you can verify what you know what that pressure is. And the first thing you do before any adjustments, always make sure your instruments work. And so for this gauge, you can isolate. And this is a bleed valve, and so you just unscrew. Um, it's loose, but if you just unscrew that part, it'll uh, it'll just bleed off. And then you see your gauge pressure drop to zero. And then you can tighten that back up and then open this again, and it'll go up to your system pressure. So with that step, you can make sure that your inlet and outlet gauges work. And then the next thing is an external strainer. Um, this makes uh, operating, you know, servicing your strainer a little bit easier. And then you could add a valve here that just makes it easy to just flush your strainer. Uh, so anytime you're doing maintenance, you can go ahead and flush that strainer. Um, so you could specify that that is not the internal style, but the external style strainer. Um, and then next we have a flexible braided hose. So when you're doing any sort of troubleshooting, it is nice to be able to um, remove and then replace the tubing um, just to make sure that, you know, what, what flow path you're getting with your water. Um, are you able to get water to the bonnet and out of the bonnet uh, with a flexible braided hose? It makes that a lot easier to do. Um, so then you have your uh, opening speed control here and then into your bonnet. Also, isolation valves on all of your ports is a good thing to specify because then you could lock your valve like this. The valve will be locked in place. It can't open or close. Um, so while you're doing maintenance on your pilot system, you can do that and not manipulate the flow of your actual system. <clears throat> so then after that, you have your uh, pilot here, outlet um, isolation valve, downstream gauge that tells you your downstream pressure. When you have a valve like this, where you locked it here and locked it here, then you could be running flow from the inlet up to the pilot, through the pilot, and out the gauge and out this bleed. So what that means is when you have the outlet locked off and the bonnet locked, that's just gonna tell you that what is the downstream pressure of the pilot. So this means that's what your pilot's set at. So you can set your pilot now with water blowing through that bleed. Um, you can set your pilot without actually having to manipulate the main valve. So that's also really nice too if you don't have enough demand to actually make the main valve work. You can still rule out your pilot system and make sure that works. And the other real beneficial thing to include is a visual indicator. Um, that way you know you can see where your main valve is operating. Um, is it all the way closed, open, or somewhere in between, which is normally where you'd like it to be. So and that's a, uh, that summarizes the uh, optional features you can add to a pilot system.